Donation. This is a raffle quilt made by Sally Trissel. She's in our group and she donated it because the proceeds that we make on this, we use the money to buy our batting and our backing and we donate quilts to hospice. We typically go to Evergreen Hospice in Albany. Now, I understand what uh, backing is, and I, I myself know what batting is, but what? To, please tell them what batting is. So the quilt, you have three layers. You have a top layer that typically is pieced together. It doesn't have to be, but it's one piece of fabric that's either pieced together or a solid piece. That's the design, correct? That's the design. The center piece is batting, and you have a choice of polyester, cotton batting there. It gives that quilt the warmth and the bulk. Like the, the blankets. Is, right, like a blanket. And the back is the backing, which is fabric. And that can be anywhere from 100% cotton to whatever you choose. Some people do minky, some people do flannel, whatever they choose. I've even seen them do silk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that little thing that goes around the outside is called none other than... The binding, okay. And that can be, you know, creative, whatever you want to do, but you really need to do a binding so the quilt doesn't fall apart. The fabric, when you see all that pretty design that has been machine sewn, that is long arm quilting, which is done by huge machines. If it's hand quilted at home, that's usually on a sewing machine. Some of us still hand quilt, hand quilt the old way with needle and thread, but, that takes a long time. And oh, heck yeah. Getting them done on time, right? Uh, not as much utilitarian as it was back in the old days, right? Some of us still have quilting frames, but we spend more time making the tops than we do, so we don't hand quilt a lot. We also, you know, we donate different to organizations for baby blankets. Yes, I noticed that yes. the photos over there that I showed my audience. And so, like I said, this is, and this quilt over here, if you want to follow me. Yes. Example of a typical hospice quilt that we donate. Um, That's beautiful. Not always this color, not always this design on the front, but they're usually small enough that they can go onto a twin bed or on a lap. And this lady, Patsy Hosing, one of our traditional members. Oh, of our group, look at that. This is the backing, the batting, and the front of the quilt. That where the design is. Mm -hmm. And that's been pieced. That was just an example. Mm -hmm. And let's see. You know, all quilts are not utilitarian anymore. You have art quilts that hang on the wall. And we had a great one you've probably shown over here with the dogs and the sheep. That oh, yes. Our theme quilts this year. Uh, we do, our group does lots of projects, and one of our projects this past year was we started with a center block, if we want to walk this way, and we each picked out our own center block and our own fabrics, and I'll use this quilt because it's kind of easy to see. This was the center block, and then each month, members came, two members, with a design or a pattern for a border. And we just wanted to practice borders. So this particular border is cut on the bias and it's just stripped kind of like piano key. That was my first border and then I separated it. And this is called a heart and it was a border design with hearts. This one is called piano key. If all these, this is called the ribbon. Each one of our members brought in two different patterns and we added it to make our own project. Nice. This is going to be a table. That's called class. teamwork, people. Right. Together, teamwork. effort, attitude, and motivation. Okay. This quilt has the same patterns as the quilt on my left. This one is yet to have the binding put on. You'll notice it doesn't have a binding, it's kind of raw edge. This one has a binding. So the difference, this is finished. So it won't ravel, and this one needs to have a binding on it. And there are the same patterns, but just different quilts. Her center block was three stars in a row. What is it, two, four, six, and eight pointed star? And that was her center, and then she started her borders. This lady made a small one just to put on top of her table. Hers had a rag center, you'll notice. Mm -hmm. I believe this is going to go, I should correct myself, this is going to go on top of her washing machine so that everyone doesn't scratch her washing machine. 
That's nice. That's what she did. And then I need one of those for my glass top washing machine. <laughs> this lady hasn't quite finished. You can see she still needs borders. They're, they're standing here, and she will be adding the borders. Then she'll have to quilt it, add the batting, then quilt it, and put borders. It's kind of in the, I would call it the first stage. This lady's all ready to put the batting and the backing. It doesn't have any... That's the oh, pattern. nice. That's just the surface, yeah. the pattern. And she started with the eight-point star, and then she's added it. And later, this is going to be a table topper for her. Nice. And that's just kind of a, we do this, we do our projects for several reasons, to practice different techniques and to have that community. Now, now say I was a novice, and I, I wanted to get associated with, a group that did this. How would I get a hold of them? If you would like to join our group, check us out, so to speak. We have some cards here that he can take a picture of, but we meet on the third Monday of each month at the Sayo Christian Church in the Fellowship Hall. We bring snacks, bring our sewing machines, things we want to sew. We work as a group. We help each other. Um, somebody might be having difficulty with the pattern, so the old timers, we have... We have a lady who's 93 that helps, and she's had a lot of years of experience, and we're wanting some youthful people to join to keep the art alive, so to speak. We will not meet in the summer months, but we start up again in September. So September through May, we are busy every month. And then we quilt a lot on our home, on our, on our own. Uh, question will be, do I have to have a sewing machine to join the group? It would be nice if you had one, if not, you're still welcome to come, cut out blocks. We'll let you borrow our machines sometimes. Sometimes we have extras, who knows? We would love to have more people. Um, this, we do projects, like I said, every year. If we go back here. We also did a project a number of years ago. It was called Block of the Month. And this is an example. This lady wanted a patriotic quilt. And she wanted it to look really patriotic and so she tied it and you'll notice it's not quilted it's, it has ties on it to hold oh. it together. a very popular thing that happened especially during the civil war when they had to get the quilts out in a hurry to the soldiers the women made the quilts and tied them and out to the field they went um, and so this is very typical for especially Civil War time period. Now, there's a method of quilting I have not seen or even know how to do myself. It is a, you put it, typically you kind of want to put it on a frame and stretch it so it doesn't get puckered. But you'll notice there's no, everything was sewn together with a sewing machine and then tied. They call them tied quilts. Mm. Um, they wash nearly as well, but they will pucker a little bit because they're not stitched tight. But during the Civil War, that was the way to do quilts. And in this, in this same year, that lady did patriotic. This lady wanted a Christmas quilt. But if you'll notice, the patterns are just the same. Example, her top left-hand block up there is the same as, we have to find it, it's here somewhere. <laughs> Watch me not be able to find it now. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing the different blocks. Do you see a different block like that? Yeah, the star one for starters. Yeah. Bottom left, and then... We all made the same blocks, but we just did different colors. This is another one with the same pattern. And then they got the one up on the upper right, uh, right lower right. left, too. Good. There's this a lot of different ones. She loves what we call batiks. This is, yeah, the this is the one I, I mentioned that it was... It was busy, but yet, for some reason, it was just easy on the eyes. I loved it. Well, it's interesting. Still love it. You would never realize these were the same blocks that are in these blankets, these quilts. But different No. Patterns, you know. I can't even tell that. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, and then if you move around the well, corner, there's more. Actually, if I do take a hard look, I do start seeing some of the same... Same pattern. These two quilts were done at the same time, same pattern. And nice. If you look carefully, you you can pick them out. Um, <laughs> you just have to look. Yeah, now that I'm actually looking. Yeah. You know 
But sometimes those colors, they, they just throw you. They make the quilt look different, right? Yeah. You could literally have two people legitimately arguing, my quilt's different than your quilt, but yet somebody else could say, no, they're not. Bear claw, this pattern. All right, and then if I and see it right here. There. And you'll see bear claw back here on this patriotic one. There's a bear claw. It says second row up from the bottom, second one in. Oh, yeah, right here. Right? Yep, that's bear claw. And there'll be a bear claw somewhere in here, but she camouflaged it using batik. You can hardly find her individual blocks. She put it together that way. And so we do a lot of projects within our group. So, and this quilt wasn't made by someone in our group. Someone brought this to show. Beautiful quilt. Beautiful, beautiful quilt. And it's a flying beast pattern, and, and she doesn't actually call it, have a pattern for it, but you'll notice how incredible. There's little, the quilting on it was done by Heather Hendricks, and it is gorgeous. Yeah, what I like about this one is the simple fact it's got little polka dots all over the material, and then to bind it, they use little polka dots. Yeah. And the binding is even in polka dots. Beautiful quilt. I mean, if you look around, you will see just comes one of the... I love that blue one too. That blue and gorgeous. And then I, I find this and here's for the, old, the fire people like I call wonderful. It the quilt. You make it out of old Levi's. Mm -hmm. And again, it is tied as opposed to quilted. You can throw it on the grass if you want to, or a kid's teenage bedroom. Yeah, I actually been saving up jeans. And <laughs> you'll notice this is kind of a treasure that you poke kids can poke stuff in the pockets. It's a great thing waiting. And the one thing about these is is heavy. <laughs> but the heaviness will keep you warm. And then um, this, I happen to know who made this and where it's going to. And I'm making sure I'm not giving away secrets. It's going to be a graduation present for a young Sweet. man who wants to go into this career. So what an if you can do quilts for gifts that mean so much to them. And that's awesome, right? That's this quilt here, I, you know, know this lady lost her husband, and this is called the Quilt of Love. We made her this quilt so she could cuddle it and have memories of her husband, and it was quilted with hearts in the back. Beautiful. So she was absolutely thrilled. She's in her 80s and misses her husband dearly, and so it's just meant a lot to her to have this. The, Thing says, in memory of Gail Bates, loving husband, father, and papa. Might be fun to see. So, a lot of us make quilts, of course. We don't have a lot of baby quilts this year. Um, I, think I found that unique to use, especially since I know how big those little pouches are. This is a good friend of mine, and... Um, she was given all these croil round bags to make welding hats out of because she makes welding hats for the family. They're welders. Oh. And they're kind of flammable because they're flammable. So uh -huh. she decided to make a quilt. Um, it's And you can see, I shouldn't be touching. That's the word of the wise. You never touch somebody's yeah, quilt. Never. Your hands back. But this, these are flannel. And so she cut them out and made this wonderful quilt. And they don't themselves drink Crown Royal, but everybody brought them bags. So what a creativity. Uh, you know, always know there's a lot of Crown Royal bags to be had, even if you don't drink. Right. So she's, it's kind of a fun, it was, she actually won her own quilt back at the family Christmas time. They had, she had donated this for their drawing and they won it back. So that's <laughs> That's called fate right there, bringing it back to your doorstep. Well, on departure, I will... This, can I do one more? Oh, time? sure. This do as one, many as you want. If you look at it, it looks like it's wavy, like the ocean wave. Yeah, that is interesting. When you get up close, it's absolutely straight. This is an optical illusion. Oh, by it's the done it's because of the... Mm -hmm. Nice. And the, in the name of this quilt is wow. Vertigo, and the really... Awesome I can see why. This is the lady that did this has been very ill, and this is her first quilt she's been able to do since her illness. So we called it her, you know, it's just a special quilt because she was able to do it. So 
And that's actually a better departing as far as I'm concerned. Keep your eyes out for more quilt action to come and follow up on it if you're interested because it is a wonderful experience if you're into it.